just make yourself comfortable. Bring your legs together. First of all, just, just have a quick look. I'm married to Michelle. Um, we've been married for uh, five years. Um, I've got two children, Rebecca, she's 12, going on 13, but actually going on 18, and Harry's seven. It goes back to when my childhood, um, I had Perth Haze disease, both hips, as a child. And the treatment then was to let it get quite bad, um, and they did an osteotomy, so they replaced, realigned the joint, whatever they do with it. I was told then that uh, it would be f possibly the age of 40 I'd need a new hip. And let's lift this leg straight up again and bend the knee for me. And then I got to at 48, and it was quite bad. I was on quite a lot of medication to, for, for, the, for, the, for the pain. And I had it assessed by my GP, and he said, you need to come and get a specialist look at it. He is a young man. I asked him, what's troubling you most? Uh, and his answer was that uh, it's, it's playing with my kids, being able to do things. And, and then, of course, there's a pain in the background. He's lived with the pain for tens of years, and he's lived with the limp with 40 years. So for him, actually, although we have cured the limp, that was not his big issue. His big issue was the pain and the functionality. And we thought, how bad is the joint? How can we achieve it uh, in, in a suitable fashion? And that dictates, then, whether we do opt for one of the three options. The first option for us is, do not do anything. Leave nature to its own means. The second is do something keyhole surgery-wise. Uh, the, the chance of that being successful in degenerative jo joint is rather modest. And the third thing when I saw him was to, to find a modern joint replacement which can conserve enough bone for him but uh, give him enough function and pain relief. He did quite a lot of work actually because um, not only did he correct or replace the hip, but he corrected the leg length. And also my leg was twisting out. So I walked at two o'clock with my right leg at two o'clock. Physiotherapy is, is terribly important after any operation, but something like a total hip replacement, um, a patient has usually been in pain for a um, fairly prolonged period of time before they have that, that procedure. They usually find that they're walking and their general function has deteriorated. And so though obviously they need that surgery in order to take away the pain, they then have to relearn how to walk, how to strengthen up their muscles and how to regain that function that they've been losing over a period of time. Coming in straight after the operation and you know the first person you see after the consultant is your physio, get up. You know, and that is literally a couple of few, few hours after. Um, and the rehabilitation through physio, yeah, I can I completely understand why, it's, why it's, it is just as important as the operation that you go to physio and you do the exercises and you get on with it. Because if you don't, then there's, you know, you, you're not going to get the benefit of the operation that you've had. There is no, the only way you're going to get over it and through it is, is, is to exercise. And that is a huge part of, of the rehabilitation. The advances in things like anaesthetics mean that people don't have to lie in bed for so long. So we're encouraging people, Andy got up the, the, the evening of surgery, um, which for most people is a sort of, are you sure, am I allowed to do that? So it takes an awful lot of coaxing and persuasion and um, yes, that's absolutely fine, but the, the whole team is involved, they've got the appropriate pain relief um, and you know initially they're getting up supported by nurse, physio, etc. Um, and then that continues, that building up of a relationship between the, the physios and then the patient in order to regain confidence um, in, in the whole rehabilitation process. It's, it's vitally important that after surgery, you have to, it's like baby steps, you have to teach them everything again, get the range of motion in, in the joint, be it knee or the hip itself. The next stage is getting the muscle balance. It's not just strengthening one group, but getting the balance right. And it's not just around the joint, it's the rest of your body, your core, your abdomen, your, your back. Within progress, um, a patient like Andy has access to um, very experienced physios who are used to working with the consultants and have good liaison with the consultants. Uh, we know exactly what they particularly want and within the range of facilities here we can offer not only just conventional exercises but we've got Pilates classes, we've got other um, lower limb strengthening classes if that was appropriate. We've got a good range of um, gym equipment so he's already started using the cross trainer, the bike, the treadmill and then we have the Alter G which is um, an anti-gravity treadmill which allows him to um, start 
uh, weight bearing through his hip quicker because some of his weight has been taken off so he's able to actually start to, to run without putting too much pressure through his new hip. Probably doing now more than I have done before. Uh, even when I was okay in my 20s, I was, my hip is a lot stronger and a lot more flexible than it was then. My aim is to be able to do single leg squats. So if I can do some good single leg squats, two or three in good form, I think we've achieved something. I've been treated very well. Um, it's, you know, I've, every step of the way has been explained to me and what we're doing and why we're doing it. My questions and my suggestions were thought of, considered and explained why they weren't reasonable for me. So it was a partnership really. It wasn't, you know, I didn't feel like I was being told what to do as the patient. I was being listened to and I was being, you know, advised. And the same with physio, you know, uh, uh, if I can't do something, I don't feel like I'm, I'm being told. It's not like a, an instructor down the gym who's, do another 10, do another 10. It's, you know, listen to your body and we work through it and we do what we can. I'm not asking to go and run, you know, come compete in a triathlon. I'm not asking to do any of that. Um, and I think, the goals that I've set myself with Caroline are achievable. Looking at x-rays and MRI scans, that's pointless. It's understanding what patients want to do. If Andrew was the same patient and he had an ambition that he wanted to do uh, certain, uh, climb certain rocks, I, I do that myself and I know the sort of moves that he's going to be able to do, joint replacement won't be for him. I will say, well, get it out of your system over the next 18 months, two years, and we'll get to that stage. Uh, if he had ambitions uh, of doing some endurance events of different sort, we have to think of a different strategy here. Here is a chap who wants to do day-to-day -day life things, play with his kids, and wants to have a reliable result. He's still making progress. He's a very motivated patient, and um, uh, I'm sure we'll get him running around the garden with his children in due course. I wish I'd done it earlier, for me, um, if I'm honest. Uh, it, um, you don't need to be in pain, you know, and it doesn't, as long as, you, it doesn't need to affect your quality of life, really. Um, it's um, for me and my personal experience. It's uh, it's the right thing to do. It's it's um, it's made a, made a huge difference. <laughs>